Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have a, another example of how to calculate the phase shift. Here, compared to the previous video, we have reversed the positions of the inductors and the resistors. So now we would expect a phase lag instead of a phase lead on the output voltage. We're trying to find the output voltage. So we have two resistors, 10 ohms and 50 ohms. We have two inductors, 1 millihenry and 2 millihenrys. The frequency is 5,000 hertz, so the angle of frequency would be 2 pi times the 5,000 hertz. To get us a quick start into the problem, we already calculated the inductive reactance for both inductors, and we found the impedance of this part of the circuit, because essentially what we're trying to do here is we're trying to find the voltage at this location, so we can find the output voltage in terms of V1, and then we can find V1 in terms of the input voltage. So here, we already calculated the impedance of this circuit, which means that we multiply the impedance of this times the impedance of that, divided by the sum of the two impedances. So finally, we got Z1 to be 9.24 with a phase angle of 5.17 degrees, or in the, the real and imaginary part format, we've written it like that. So now, we calculate V1 as a function of the input voltage, where we use the voltage divider, we take the impedance of this part of the circuit and divide it by the sum of the impedance plus the impedance or the reactance across the inductor. So let's go ahead and continue then with the problem from this point out. So the input voltage, well, we'll just leave it as Vn. The impedance in the numerator, let's go ahead and use this format right here, that would be 9.24 with a phase angle of 5.17 degrees. And then in the denominator, we're going to add the two together. So we have to write it as X sub L1, that's right there, that would be J31.42 plus the impedance in this format, which is 9.20 plus J0.83. Okay, summing that up, we get the following. I guess I should put a complete just like that. So in the numerator we have 9.24 with a phase angle of 5.17 degrees. In the denominator we have the real part of, um, well, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these together right here. That makes it a little quicker. So this is 9.20 plus J. When we add this together, that would be uh, 3, that would be 5. 8 plus 4, that's 2, 1. That would be 32.25. Let's see, that's correct. Yes, that's correct. And so now we can go ahead and put into magnitude and angle format 9.2 squared plus 32.25 squared. Take the square root of that, and that gives us 33.54 in the denominator with an angle of, okay, we have 32.25 divided by 9.2. Take the inverse tangent of that at 74.08 degrees. You can already see that we're going to have a negative phase angle here for V1. V1 is equal to Vn times, well, let's see here. We have to calculate that. 9.24 divided by 33.54 equals that 0.275. 0 0.275 with a phase angle. I kept an extra decimal place to uh, reduce the rounding errors. 5.17 minus 74.08. That gives us a minus 68.91 degrees. Okay, so now we have the V1 in terms of the input voltage. Now we need to calculate V out in terms of V1. So now we can write that V out is equal to V1 times, again, we're going to do a voltage divider ratio. We're going to take the uh, impedance, in this case resistance of R2, divided by the impedance of this part of the circuit right here. So we get R2 in the numerator, that's the voltage drop across the resistor, compared to the voltage drop across this branch right here. So that would be um, um, L2, the reactance, that would be J, Oh, I'll just write like this, XL2 plus R2. There we go. So here you can clearly see how we're going to calculate the output voltage. So this is equal to V1 
times R2, that would be uh, 50, with a phase angle of 0 degrees, divided by, in the denominator, X sub L2, I'm going to reverse the order, so write this as 50 plus J, and uh, L2, it's 62.83, which is equal to V1 times 50 with a phase angle of 0 degrees, divided by... Let's find the magnitude of that, 62.83, we square that, plus 2,500, take the square root of that, which is 80.30, with a phase angle of 62.83 divided by 50, take the inverse tangent, it gives us 51.49 degrees, 51.49 degrees, which is equal to V1, the magnitude, 50 divided by 80.3, that's 0 0.62, with a phase angle of minus 51.49 degrees. Like that, kind of squished there, but there it is, because that becomes the negative of this angle, and 50 divided by 80 is about 0.62. All right, now we have v0 in terms of v1 and we have v1 in terms of vn so now we can go ahead and calculate the output voltage so the output voltage v is equal to v1 and v1 is equal to this quantity right here which is v input which we know what that is so we get the input voltage which is 5 volts with an angle of 0 degrees so that's the input voltage we multiply that times this which is 0 0.275 uh, with an angle of minus 68.91 degrees and then now they have V1 which is simply the product of those two multiplied times this portion right there which is 0 0.62 with a phase angle of minus 51.49 degrees There we go. So now, to get the result, the output is equal to, we multiply all these together, so we have 5 times 0.275 times 0.62, that gives us 0 0.85, with a phase angle of 68.91, make that negative, and then minus 51.89. 0.49 equals, that's minus 120.4 degrees, minus 120.4 degrees, and of course that's in terms of volts. So there's your output voltage, notice the phase shifting is now in the negative direction because we have the inductors over here and the resistors over there. Uh, it's 120 degrees, that's more than 90 degrees, so if you do a little diagram of that, so you can see that this would be the input voltage V in that would be 5 volts the output voltage would have a lag of 120 degrees much smaller there would be the V out so you notice that the magnitude would be 0.85 volts instead of the 5 volts with an angle shift of a minus 120.4 degrees and that's then the resulting output you see shifted by 120 degrees in the negative direction and that's how it's done